Morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Monday. It's the 17th day of June 2024. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope your family had a good weekend. I hope you and your family are safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field along with the first responders every day saving lives. Those also that pick up garbage, keep our places clean. Those also that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women that are out here trying to help, rescue, deliver, and recover. Teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. People that are also victims of pornography and child pornography. Human trafficking, sex, slavery, prostitution, child prostitution. Double curses on the perpetrators of these things. Double curses on those who profit from these things. And double curses on the perverts that create the demand for these things. Finally, double blessings on the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, children, families, veterans, senior citizens, homeless in the United States of America, and millions around the world in similar or worst conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. So I was looking at some hoops hype stuff from the weekend, and I felt, I still feel, that this is a good lesson. For those that are interested in understanding what the Don does, why he does it, and what he's about to do. Because you can see the Leon Rose and the Nick front office. One thing they have been for four seasons that people are not picking up on is consistent. They think about moves the same way. They do due diligence the same way. Okay, They're looking to build the right way. And they've been consistent with that. Have they been 100% mistake-free, as some knuckleheads are going to point out? No, but neither have the knuckleheads. But they have been on more than they've been off, and they know what the hell they're doing. Now, case in point, I have had people coming on my channel and really saying, the Knicks are going to get Donovan Mitchell. They're getting ready to get Donovan Mitchell. They've been tripping ever since that summer when Leon was listening to Jack the Ripper about Donovan Mitchell. They've been tripping. Oh, it's going to happen. Oh, Donovan Mitchell's coming. And I've been telling them, stop smoking what you're smoking. Stop drinking what you're drinking. He's not coming to New York. He doesn't fit. Just like Johnny Cochran said, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. And in your case, quit. Stop it. He's not coming. Well, anyway, this weekend, I saw from Hoops Hype, Nick's not that enthusiastic about Donovan Mitchell. You see what happens. And I keep telling you. It's either sometimes the representation or the agents of the player expressing the player's desire or expressing the player's chess move to try to get whatever he's trying to get. Or it's just people just trying to put out clickbait. If it doesn't make sense according to what you know, if you paying attention about Leon Rose, it's not going to happen. I kept telling you, and I still told you, you already got Jalen Brunson. You can't have Brunson and Donovan Mitchell. And it's the same reason that Donovan Mitchell doesn't fit with Darius Garland. Not enough defense. Not enough. And they've shown that in the last two seasons as they've been bounced. Okay? So now I'm wondering if everybody's going to pick this up when it says, if Mitchell were to hit the trade market again, I'm going to put the link in the description box this summer, Link, the Knicks would not be enthusiastic in their pursuit of him. You see, there is a difference in the Knicks pursuing somebody and then, or the Knicks doing due diligence. They will always do due diligence. In other words, any player that's available, they're going to look at, ask about, check on. That don't mean they're pursuing the player. Of course, I can tell you all that to a blue in the face. Some of you are going to trip regardless. But I'm still telling some of you all to have hope. <laughs> that I have hope for. Okay? Then, here's another one. New York has never engaged. In serious trade conversation for Carl Anthony Towns. There was another contingent of knuckleheads on my channel. Oh no, they're going to get Cat. They're going to trade Julius for Cat. And I told you, Juju ain't going nowhere. And I'd rather have Juju than Cat. Period. And here, the Knicks have always had an eye on Towns. Though, his, though this front office has never engaged 
in serious trade negotiations for him. He's a CAA client, but they've never engaged in serious trade discussions for him. Can we end that harebrained fantasy now? Y'all believe it now? I told y'all, forget it. It's not going to happen. Okay? Wait a minute. Uh, Paul George. Too old, too expensive, too injury prone. I've been telling y'all that. The Knicks have kicked George's name around before, according to league searches, but they've never seriously pursued him in a deal. Wait, let me say that again. Paul George. The Knicks never seriously pursued him in a deal. And you know why? Doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, you got to quit. This is the league. This ain't NBA 2K. They don't need him. Too injury prone. Got to give up too much. Too expensive. Not going to help our team. Told you that. Now, here's the last one. The John T. Murray. Okay, wait. And again, I want you to listen carefully how this reads. Because some of y'all just can't see behind the words. Let me help you here. Okay? Just going to try to help my, my peoples in Knicks Nation. A lot of y'all get it already. But some of y'all that don't, so like some of y'all that was truly sure that we're going to get Donovan Mitchell. Let me tell you. Let's, let's look at this here. Hawks spoke with the Knicks about DeJounte Murray. The Hawks fielded offers for Murray leading up to this past winter's trade deadline, but could not find one worth executing. During that time, they spoke with the Knicks, league sources said, but the two sides never got close to an agreement. Now, it's a couple of things we need to understand here. It's not that the Knicks called the Hawks and inquired about DeJounte Murray. The Hawks called the Knicks trying to unload Murray on the Knicks. Some of y'all, DeJounte Murray, you can stop now. The Knicks are not interested. See, the Knicks will always do due diligence. Every player, on every player. So when Ian Beckley says everybody's available, it doesn't mean they're actively trying to trade everybody. If the right deal comes around, and here, just importantly, at the right fit and at the right price, the Knicks might consider. Might. The right fit and the right price. Some of y'all forget those two. It's not one or the other. It's the right fit and the right price. Let me say it again. The right fit and the right price. Last summer, OG Ananobi was on the market, but they couldn't, and he's the right fit, obviously, but they couldn't get the right price from Toronto. Not until the trade deadline. But before that, whenever the trade season opened this past winter. Okay? The right fit. In the right price. The Dante Murray ain't the right fit. And ain't the right price. They never even called. Hawks called the Knicks. Because you know. Y'all buy into the hype. Just because a team calls the Knicks. Or even if the Knicks actually call another team. So most of the time. What you must first understand. Is for the Knicks. It's about do. Diligence. It's not always they are pursuing somebody. Don't get caught in the hype of these stupid platforms and these stupid clickbaits. Don't get caught in the hype. They're not pursuing just because they talk to somebody. Okay? If you are married, does every person that you talk to, somebody you're pursuing? See how silly that sounds? The Knicks are married to their team that they have carefully developed. They're only going to pursue pieces that are at the right fit and at the right price. That's it. They're not going to just haphazardly break up their team for some BS. This is a title contender you're looking at. Some of y'all still don't recognize. You're looking at a title contender. Right now. Okay? Not... You know, come, it's here. So they're not going to just break this up for some NBA 2K fantasy on clickbait. Not going to do that. Okay? Catch it. Please. <laughs> Catch it. 
So they never really were chasing, they never chased DeJounte Murray. The Hawks were trying to unload him on the Knicks. But I already told y'all, Dante DiVincenzo and Jalen Brunson, they're top notch. They're right now, I'm going to be conservative and say, out of the 30 teams in the NBA, Dante and Jalen are top five in terms of a backcourt, effectiveness backcourt, winning backcourt. Why would they trade that? Because somebody's NBA 2K fantasy is DeJounte Murray. They're not going to. Like, for example, somebody brought up, and I'm not going to say names, I'm not trying to break on you, but they said, why don't the Knicks pursue Obi Toppin? You know, because that's another clickbait BS this offseason. And I asked a very simple question. Very simple question. What you have to understand is, if Obi Toppin were to come back to New York, okay, he would be the ninth man. Ninth. You'd have Mitchell Robinson, Deuce McBride, and Josh Hart as part of your top eight. Then you would have the ninth guy, which would in this case be Obi. Right now, Obi is the seventh guy or the eighth guy on Indiana's bench. That's where he is right now. Why would he come back to New York to take a lesser role? The answer is he wouldn't. See, before people start talking about, well, why don't we just go get Obi? That's that mentality from the past. Just, you know, go on the shelf and grab the loaf of bread. It's there. It's got to be the right fit and the right price. Some of y'all need to catch this. That's how the Don operates. He looks at the price. So what you have to actually look at, Knicks Nation, is when you're looking at any player, first of all, you got to look at the price, the real price. Not, not the, not the uh, couple of bag of chips you think you're going to get some star player for. And then when you understand the cost, you got to understand, is it worth breaking up what we have built for that cost? So far, the Donovan Mitchell, no. PG-13, no. DeJounte Murray, no. Cat, no. It's not worth breaking up what we have built for any of those guys. Some of y'all are really hanging on the nutsack of this Giannis dream. Forget it. Forget it. It's not happening. Okay, it's not it's not happening. He is a very faithful dude. He's faithful to Milwaukee. They drafted him, developed him. He wants to work it with Dane. I don't think it's going to work, but that's what he's going to do. He's going to probably have his own statue in front of the Milwaukee Stadium when he retires. And MB, please. MB was on the TV the other day putting his eyes toward PG-13. You know why? Because he's desperate. Desperate. And the problem is in the mirror. Remember remember this? We are the better team. We're going to win this series. Remember that? We are the better team. I'm telling you, we're going to win this series. Yeah, okay, Swami. <laughs> Yo. Everybody's scared of New York. I'm going to tell you that right now. Don't listen to me. Everybody is scared of New York. These brothers come back healthy in September. The Knicks are going to be a problem. Y'all enjoy your Monday. Shalom.